impossible when you put your trust in God. Come on, nothing. Nothing is, is impossible, impossible when you're trusting in his word. Hearken. Hearken to the voice of God to thee. Is there anything too hard for me? Well, put your trust in God alone and is uh, everything. Don't change the song. Don't change it. Every time I come here, you try and change that song. Bruce, what are we going to do with this group? What's that? We're going to love them. See, the, thing, the reason I like this song is because that word everything means everything. That means you, your health, your money, your marriage, your ministry, your future. That means as long as you're alive and breathing, everything's within reach. Come on, put your hands up. Say, everything is within reach. As I reach, I'm using my faith. As I reach further, I'm reaching more of my faith. And I declare tonight that everything is about to take place that I never dreamed would happen in my lifetime. Come on, give God a big shout. Yes. Come on, everything. Everything is possible. With. Come on, give him a shout. Come on, I said, give him a big, big shout. If, if you're standing next to somebody tonight that's hitchhiking, that means they're not shouting, they're not clapping, they're just, they're just hitching a ride on the rest of us. You tell them, no hitchhiking tonight. Come on. Come on. You may be seated. So, so good to be with you tonight here again yet another year. God sends us to the desert. <laughs> There's so many lessons in the desert, isn't there, though? Deserts of life. But here in this place, it's the desert geographically. But this, something has shifted in this church. Something has shifted. I believe just the waves of glory are all over this place. And between tonight and tomorrow's session, the phrase I want you to remember that I'm going to say quickly, and then I'm going to move on, and Bruce and Lisa, give them a God bless you. They're with me tonight. I was, as I was sitting on the front row, Pastor Ron and Jennifer, thank you again for this wonderful opportunity to be here. You have a tiger by the tail here. It's, it's bigger than what, and growing, and, uh, you know, you and I shared before the service. But as I was sitting here, just, you know, in back of the people that were at this altar and just basking in, isn't that worship great that you had tonight? <laughs> the phrase I have for you tonight is, don't waste your grace. Don't, there shouldn't be a sickness that escapes a meeting after that worship. There shouldn't be anybody in bondage. There shouldn't be anything that we're tolerating escape an atmosphere like this. This atmosphere is meant to kill giants. Come on, somebody. It's meant. It's meant. 
You know, I mean, I've been in this kind of an atmosphere. It's not common. I mean, this, something here is very, this atmosphere is meant to kill cancer cells. And the danger is, is that you get used to it. And then it becomes so common to you that it becomes invisible. What's common becomes invisible. And what's invisible, you don't fully comprehend or appreciate. You know, until it's not there or you're not there. But I was sitting there, the anointing and the favor and the, and the restoration and the deliverance. I mean, if you're one of those that really don't like to get delivered publicly, you know, and, or you don't like to be slain publicly or you're not into all of that, I mean, that atmosphere, that's where you get it. Sitting right in your seat. We just had a lady in California, down here in Southern California, 91 years old, 91 years, think about that, 91. So if you're here at 91, you're, you're still available, you're still on the open market, 91. She had two hernias disappear. Her cataracts disappeared. 91, now, 91, 91. And I, I mean, I never touched her, just in the atmosphere of the meeting. And I mean, she was running up and down those outways and just embarrassing everybody 90 and under. Come on, there. So if you're here and you think, well, mine's too far gone or I'm too old or... I'm too heavy, I'm too thin. My diagnosis isn't, you don't understand. This tonight is to really and tomorrow, and I know it's been happening all week, but at some point in time, you've got to really take the limits off God. And whatever reason you're confining him, and you continue to come into this amazing atmosphere, but you still can't get healed of your allergies. You're in this amazing atmosphere, and you're still in bondage to this and that. Then, then that's why tonight I want to talk about, say this with me, there's some, and then there's more, and there's all. Say it again, there's what? I, I, that continues to just repeat within me everywhere that I go. There's so many people sitting on 30% healed for years. They're 30, they've been satisfied with 30%. They can tell you when it happened and who the preacher was or if it was their pastor. And, and they said, oh, back, I mean, it's been 10 years. I've been sitting on 30%, some 40%. Some people, you know, 50%. Some people, I'm so much better. We serve a God of all. I said, we serve a God of all. Come on, somebody say... I mean, if you have nothing, some is something. If you have no money and somebody gives you 500 bucks, come on, somebody. You go from nothing to 500, you're like, my God, I've hit the promised land. But it won't take long for you to realize you need more. And there is more. If you've not seen somebody walk on water yet, there's more. If you haven't seen a dead man raise yet, there's more. If you hadn't seen a U-Haul truck back up with bags of money for you, then you know there's more. Come on. And then after you get the more, you can get stuck on more. And more becomes the enemy of all. Come on, say the prodigal. The prodigal's father gave him the ring, the robe, the cow, and the party too. Some people happy they just got a robe. They didn't get the ring yet. They didn't get, they didn't get the cow. And a few of you look like you could use a party. Come on, somebody say amen. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I said give him all the praise. David went and recovered all. When the leper went back, that was uh, to give thanks. It says he was made whole. That meant his fingers grew back. The leprosy ate away parts of your body. His toes grew back. The, the other nine went home healed, but they still were missing fingers. 
They were missing ears. They were missing body parts. But because one went back grateful, as your pastor said, grateful opens up the hand. When, he, when they went back grateful, and he was the grateful, those missing body parts came all back into, that's why when he returned, nine went home healed, but one went home, my God, where'd you get those fingers? Where'd you get that new ear? Look at those toes! This is not an hour to get comfortable or to be satisfied. In surfing, of course, you're familiar with surfing out here. Surfing, there's a phrase in surfing, when you're comfortable, you're dead. You can never be comfortable when you're working a wave or you're just not gonna be on top of that wave very long. Something is happening here. It's happening fast. It's furious. And the healings that are available for you some of those things that you've been believing, they're in the pipeline. Some of that deliverance that you thought maybe could never happen. Some of those opportunities for money and business. Some creative ideas for entrepreneurship. I mean, I believe this meeting this week with what time is left and the coming weeks after this. Last night's meeting, I guess this is meeting three or four, what is it? I don't know. But I'm telling you right now, if you'll just let the Holy Ghost move over you. Don't restrict him in any way. You can leave here tonight with one God idea. Come on, say one God idea. You can leave here tonight with one God idea. You can leave here tonight with a spiritual recipe for complete healing of your diabetes. You could have your years reversed. You could have Alzheimer's and dementia just shut down. We just had an amazing miracle in Toronto. I mean, this Pastor Brian Mahood, we go there every month in Toronto. It's, it's grown so much, we just don't know where we're gonna take it. But the miracles, and I was in a meeting here maybe a few months ago, and there was a guy standing right beside the pastor that hosts all of this. I didn't know the guy, I knew the pastor. I didn't know that the guy was completely blind. I didn't know that. Or I never would have asked him to do what I was about to ask him to do. And uh, just out of courtesy, just out of courtesy. But there had been people that had been prayed for. They were laying all over the floor in the front. And the pastor said, when he called me the next day, the pastor was just like, I know this man. I know him so well. He's completely blind. Billy, he's completely blind. I said, okay, well, what, tell me what happened. He said, because I looked over and I said to the blind man, who's now not blind, I said, sir, I just feel like you need to take off running. Well, the pastor said, How's he gonna run with all these people laying in front of him? He said, I thought, here's disaster right at the beginning of a service. But every time he would run, he would come to a person, he'd jump over the person. So he jumped over the person over back, and he jumped on the way back. And so when he got back, the pastor said, I was so shocked. I leaned over and I said, how'd you do that? <laughs> he said, every time I came to a person, I could see them. Every time. Come on, come on. Every time. See, sometimes you gotta put your, river, your foot in the river first. You're waiting on God. Sometimes God's waiting on you. Sometimes you have to take a step in faith. Well, when God heals me that, no, no, maybe you need to take a step. Maybe you need to do something that you're waiting on God until you're more perfected until you're more together, until you see better, hear better, until your back pain is gone, until you have enough money in the bank, until your house is paid off, until your kids get out of college. Everything's on hold. Your whole life is on hold. And God is saying, no, don't wait. Don't wait on circumstance. Wait on the Lord. Come on, somebody give God a shout. Come on. Come on. Come on, give them a mighty praise in this place. I mean, we all can't be up here tonight ministering. That'd be really great. But so whenever something happens to anybody in this room tonight, I mean, this, that's the place for you to celebrate. Even though you may have a greater need than them. Even though you may think, well, when's it my turn? Sometimes you got to just put your time in praising what happens to other people. They may be in line ahead of you. So what? I think he has enough. Come on, say, God has enough healing. 
enough money, enough favor. Come on, somebody give him a mighty, mighty praise. But you got to take the limits off because if you don't take the limits off, you're going to be asking for far less than what he wants to do. You can keep disqualifying yourself. I love getting, I love getting amazed and shocked in my own services. If it sounds like my, I like my own cooking, I do. I mean, I really don't cook it, I don't do it, but I get amazed, I get almost humbled. It's just incredible that what happens in these services, and it could happen to you tonight, but you gotta just let go and not be ashamed. I mean, I, as I stood here with this, all these people here, I mean, there's a lot of needs here tonight. There's bondages here. There's deliverance that's needed. Or else you're wasting the grace that came in here. Like I said, that atmosphere right there, I mean, Lazarus would walk out of here. <laughs> Lazarus. I was ready to get born again all over again right sitting right there. But see, you're, you're enjoying that. You're enjoying the presence, but you're not taking full advantage of what that presence can do for you. There shouldn't be any tobacco, nicotine, or drugs be able to hold you another day. The day you walked in here tonight should be the last time that ever happened, that power of that, that presence. Come on, see, every time I get healed, I don't just get a healing. I get presence. God would never have you just get a healing and not have any head start on living for him. So he leaves a deposit of him, of the presence of him. He's not just here to give you. It's like whenever somebody gives you a great gift that's close to you, every time you see that gift, you think of them or that card or that dress or whatever, that flower arrangement. But when he gives you a healing, there's a presence that, you ne that doesn't ever wear off. That pain that left your body, those eyes that got better, those, those cataracts, that glaucoma, you know, that irritable bowel syndrome, whatever it was before you came in that meeting, man, you got presence with it. So when you walk out of here, you may not go to church the next week or the week after, but presence is in you. And God has started a work in you. Come on, somebody give him a shout. Come on, you gotta give him praise here. But don't let, don't let anything tonight hold you back. Just came out of Pittsburgh. A lady drove from Virginia. She had a frozen neck. She had eight steel screws. This is Myers. Eight steel screws in her neck. Okay, and this was happened in Virginia, at Landmark Church down there. And the power of God hit her while her neck got healed, but when she went back to the doctor, all the screws disappeared. <laughs> oh, that's not what's coming. So she comes to Pittsburgh in our Pittsburgh meeting to tell that story. So she said, I went to the doctor and she said, my neck was all healed and eight screws disappeared. And there was only one guy over here on the side. He got so excited, he did backflips the whole way across the church. Which I really told him, please don't do that again in the meeting, please. And, and my point to you is this, is that when we sing Nothing's Impossible, the only one limiting that is you. Weight loss can happen here tonight. Weight loss. Money can appear in strange places. I was in Fort Worth and a lady here that had cancer came to tell her story. She started crying. She said, I, I would come to these meetings more, Billy Burke, but I don't have any transportation. And the guy sitting over here walked over and handed her keys to a new BMW. I said, well, no, that's mine. Hey, 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 that's mine. That's mine. As the soul prospers, nothing is off the, off the list tonight. Some restaurants, you got to catch crab in season. Come on. Lobster in season. 
But on the menu tonight, come on, say, everything in season. Everything. Hands up all over the place. Come on, say, I'm taking the limits off. The limits off. off God tonight. God. Something's going to happen to me. I could lose a few pounds. I could lose some cancer. A couple of lumps. Some cataracts. I could get delivered of a spirit that's been tormenting me creating fear and uncertainty, keeping me in wrong relationships. It's got to go tonight. Come on, give him a mighty praise. Come on. Come on.
Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And all heaven declares. I believe, I believe. few years I know there's been many people touched and healed in these services could you give me a half a dozen testimonies here tonight some people that have been touched maybe last year's meeting the meeting before that can you come down quickly anybody at all can give a testimony of a past miracle that they received here at one of these services can you wave at me who's I'm waiting just here comes a lady on the side here. I want to see you get a couple. I'd like to get at least six if I could. Six. Come, sir. Come. Yeah. This lady here's coming. Anybody in the balcony? Come. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Yes, there's another people coming there. Over here, anybody in this section over here? I'll tell you, it's pretty. How do you keep a healing is that you continually give them thanks. You keep praising them over and over and over again. What happened? Get a mic. What happened here, sir? Uh, I came last year, and I had a bladder issue, and I came up and were talking to you about the bladder issue, and then you asked me if I wanted to be healed. I said, yes, I want to be healed, went out in the spirit. And then um, I felt, when I'm on the ground, I felt something leave. I felt like I got my deliverance. I got my healing, right? See, so you take everything serious. He's on the ground. He feels something leave. Mm -hmm. 
Now, we don't get into the details. Something, we just leave it there, something. Could it be a pain leave? Yeah. Could it be disease leave? Yeah. Could it be a spirit leave? Yeah. We don't want to draw too much attention to that. The fact is he felt something leave. It's very, very important that you, 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 when you're getting touched, that you take everything serious. How many would like to see better, hear better, feel better? Come on, how many? Yeah, yeah. If you think about it, it's a pretty good deal. I heal you, and all you have to do is testify. I'll take away the cancer, just testify. You know, it's very, very important that there's a part in here that, that God expects for you to give back. Okay, and he's not asking it for much. He's just saying, hey, give me the credit. Give me the glory. Give me all the praise. That's a pretty good deal. That's a pretty good deal. So, sir, it's all gone or what? So what happened is the next day, um, you, I heard in spirit, you said it's still there. And, 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 I, and I, um, I was, you said that, um, that I would have to cut the head off the serpent. Oh, that, wow. That, that's what I'm hearing in the spirit, right? Yeah. I was thinking of James, you don't have to confess your sins. Yeah. There was a lot, of, um, yeah. a lot of groundwork to do to keep your healing. And, right. And, and that, that's what I heard in the spirit. Yeah. And, and so, you heard that, okay. Right. So it was kind of interesting you were mentioning um, weight loss because I, I lost like 25 pounds. You lost 25 pounds? 25 pounds. And, boy, and I didn't change my eating habits, right? Now, wait a minute. He didn't change any eating habits. Any eating habits. That is not fair right there. That is not and, and, fair. And, and, and then my good cholesterol and all, uh, everything started to balance out. Uh, but, 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 uh, um, did you tell anybody about this? Well, my wife knows. No, more than your wife. <laughs> my, my wife. You lost, you lost 25 pounds. 25 pounds. That'll fill your church right there. Yeah. As far as the bladder issue, I, mean, the, um, I went back to the doctor. Yeah. They did some things. Yeah. And then, uh, um, they did some chemo injections, and it is gone. So I wasn't, It's all gone. It's all gone. I wasn't wanting to do that. I wasn't wanting to do the injections, and I testified that to you last year that I didn't want to do the injections. I was holding off on yeah, the injections. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. One of our meetings in tongues um, and interpretations of tongues, we got the word injection. So, okay. yeah, so I mean, so that, so I finally had, I went and had them. It's a done deal. It's a done deal. It's a fixed fight. It, it's done. Come on, give God a big Praise shout out. That nice <laughs> Come on over here, man. What happened? What happened? Well, last year we came and um, I was prayed for for melanoma. Melanoma, Melanoma, skin cancer. Yes, uh -huh. but it was also metastasized internally. Oh, my. So I'm, we're still working on that part, but I had a growth under my arm. Yeah. It's gone. Whoa! It's gone. Come on, can somebody... Somebody... What's the matter with that? You know, I know you're seeing healings here and miracles here, and I think that's amazing. You don't ever get bored with miracles. Don't get tired of winning. Don't get, don't get defensive over you getting a reputation that you come to this church because they believe in all that stuff down there. Say, so, yeah, I do, and what do you see what else I believe in? He's coming back on clouds of glory. And, and horses... Tell them. Don't be ashamed of him. Don't be ashamed of him. I mean, this can't be hush-hush. He heals you so that you see it, people around you see it, and so that at some point you're able to verbalize what happened to you. That's really a great, that's amazing. Where did, where did she go? That's amazing. To have that size of a tumor disappear. Oh, it was about the size of a baseball. Oh, my. Yeah. So the visibleness part is taken care of. I've had people tell me how much better I look, how much more energy there you go. I have. There you go. So I'm back for more. You're what? <laughs> I'm back for more. <laughs> you say don't be satisfied. So I have a couple of other things that I'm here for tonight too. He don't so. <laughs> heal you because you're good. He heals you because he's good. That's right. Okay, so... 
So, not one person Jesus healed was a Christian because he hadn't even gone to the cross yet. So they were in their sins in some level. He healed them looking towards the cross. Okay, so it, it's just, a, you gotta know that it's not because you eat right, even though you should, and I should. It's not because you're doing everything right, we should. But there's this thing called mercy. There's this thing until you get the knowledge, until you get the really into the flow of things. God will cover you as long as he sees you moving forward. As long as he sees you, what, in, in pursuit. David never had God's heart. He was after it, but he never had it. Come on, say he was after it. When you're after something, you don't have it because you're after it. He was in pursuit. So God counts your pursuit as amazing because it says what he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek. So as long as you're seeking what he has for you, for what he suffered for, he cares about what he suffered for. It was way greater than, you know, the movie that was made, you know, with Caviezel in it and all of, it was a great movie, but even that that touched so many people, it was beyond that. I mean, the smell of that, the grossness of it, and he did that for you and I. He died for our sins, but he was suffered for our healing. Come on, say, my healing isn't free. Healing isn't free. He suffered for this. Tied to a whipping post. Made mobile. And he walked away from there. And he covered me with it. Come on, give God a big shot. I believe that. I believe that. Wow. So you're being treated. You're being treated for this. Yes. With medicine or what? Um, with medicine and I also do just holistic things and pray a lot. And, um, but yet, what last year I was being treated a certain way and you said then you don't need that anymore that's not working and, oh. and that was absolutely true well I tried to tell the truth I tried to <laughs> <laughs> so. come on give God a big shout quickly come on. oh come on we gotta give him praise yes 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 there's an irritable bowel syndrome being healed right now. Where are you? Irritable bowel, IBS, being healed right this moment. Where are you? Come quickly. Come. Don't even wait. Don't wait. How long? How long? How long, big boy? Two years. Two years. No more two years. No more two years. No more. No more two years. No more two years. That's over. It's over. Come on, you got to give him all the praise. This church is going to be known for expecting. And not just a half a cup. All. Some more. Forget not. How many benefits? Forget not all. Come on, say, I'm all in. For everything he did. You spectate to imitate. I'll be talking about that tomorrow. Don't miss that. We spectate to imitate. We don't become full-time spectators. God's trying to empty the grandstands. Jesus walked through that gate beautiful for three years, never healed that crippled man. He was there for the whole time. Every day he would go to the gate beautiful. He was there every time Jesus went in and out, but Jesus never touched him. But two of Jesus' understudies, Two of his disciples, they were reserved for the disciples to take care of. Look at your neighbor and say, God's left some people for you. Come on, tell your neighbor. Right? <laughs> I'm praying for them, I'm praying for them, I'm praying for them, but keep them in prayer. Maybe just touch them and put a prophecy on them and watch God work. Come on, come on. What happened to you? So back in 2018, yeah. I wasn't part of this house yet, but um, I came in. I was diagnosed with valley fever, and they said Valley that, fever? Mm -hmm, What's they, that? It's some fungus. It's in the air. I breathed it in. It attached to my lungs. Oh, my. And I was 
practically dying. And I was in the hospital. I saw this demon trying to choke me out. I said the name of Jesus. He disappeared. And then I came to the Holy Spirit conference. I was on meds too. And um, the first night, I couldn't swallow anything. So the first night I was healed, I was able to actually eat. Then I hadn't eaten in like two months. It was like water and crackers. And then the next day, you were here. And you said something and you said, if you believe in your healing, then you have to do something to, to show God that you believe. Right away, it was like, throw away your medication. Oh my. So I didn't tell my husband. I didn't tell my mom. I didn't tell anyone. And fast forward four months later, I finally told my doctor. And she got really upset at me. And she's like, well, we're going to have to wait for two months, you know, because it takes that long for the medication, blah, blah, blah. I said, I haven't taken it for four months. And then she got really upset at me. And she's like, well, you know, your level's all down, so just don't, don't go back on it. So fast forward two years, she kept on seeing me every month. Levels kept on going down. Levels kept on going down. I became part of this house. And, um, and then the last chest x-ray, she said, well, um, you, your lungs are scarred. You'll have pneumonia. You're going to be sick when you're older. You know, you can't do this. You can't do that. And I said, we'll see about that. And then he said, why? He said, why did, she said, why did you let go of your medication? I said, because I was healed by Jesus Christ. She looked at me like I was a weirdo, of course. Two years later, pandemic hit and people were like, you're, you know, you're compromised. And I was like, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. She gave me my last x-ray. She calls me to give me my results. And she said, I don't know how this happened, but you have brand new lungs. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on my God. Oh, somebody better give him praise. Oh, my God. Wow. And I said, I told you Jesus healed me. And she said, okay, I release you. Fast forward another year. Um, I, I found right. you, someone. You got to believe. Wait, this, yes. None of this is free. I mean, it's free to us. Grace drops it at your door. Grace drops everything at your door. And we don't believe in the works of the law, but we do believe in the works of faith. They're different. One says you earn it. The other one says no, but you got to get it on the inside. It's free, but you got to get that thinking in there. You got to begin to believe. You've got to begin to believe that at your age, 91 and two hernias disappear in the meeting and cataracts. It was too much for some people to take. They begin to think, my God, is this stuff real? Yeah, it is real. It's very real. And this is what well, you go to church right here, right? Yes. Yes. And then fast forward a year or two. You're always fast forwarding everything. I know. Everything. I don't want to give you guys all the details. It's a lot. Um, I found out that she gave her life to God oh! right after my testimony. Oh, come on. Somebody. Woo. And I love Jesus. Amazing. 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 Master, I pray you touch her completely here tonight and Open up those doors that have been closed for so long. Those doors that she wants to open, has wanted them to open. They've been closed until now. There's a season of favor coming to you because you can boldly testify. You declared his name. He's going to trust you with more. Get ready. Get ready for a ride through the galaxy with the Holy Ghost. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. <laughs> Come on, give him a mighty shout. Wow. Whoa. Only believe. Only believe. All things are possible. Only. Come on, say only. Believe. Everybody, only. Come on, all things, all, all things are, are possible. possible. Oh. Only believe. 
put your hands up and say, Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Oh, every person. Lord. Lord, I believe. Oh. He's moving mightily. Let's take it up, Bruce. Lord, I receive. Come on, and Lord. Lord, I receive. Every single person, Lord. to you quickly what happened I have IBS and they're saying I may have to have spine surgery they told you that yes they said you might have to so why'd you and take I it? said I'm coming here <laughs> and God <laughs> is gonna heal me <laughs> I have been in bed for two weeks you you've been in bed for two weeks because of my spine and my neck does it hurt yes does it hurt now? Yes. You sure? Yes. Check it. It's right in here. Well, just check it. It's not hurt. Check it. <laughs> it hurts. Still hurting. <laughs> He's all over you. He brought you here tonight for this moment. The pain goes, the infection goes. Every bone in your body is going to be fine. Do you hear me? Yes. I believe. When I touch you, it's going to go all through your body. It's going to go all through the body, all through the body. Oh, my gosh. Oh, Lord. That woman is out. Did you see that? Did you see that? Huh? She was on fire. Her eyes rolled right back in her head. She may be up to heaven and back here in a couple seconds, I'll tell you what. Ma'am, you here for this? I guess you are, right? I couldn't tell if you're a worker. Workers really need help. What's going on here? I would be, if I was anybody in this room tonight, anything you came in here, we just had a lady that worked for me for 20 years. I was in a meeting in Fort Worth, and I called something out. Cataracts was the word called out. She went to the, to the sink to just wash her face before going to bed. Cataracts didn't fall off, but rubber, pieces of rubber that were shaped around her eyes. She didn't even know they were there. And they just fell into the sink basin. When she took them to the autometrist, he said, I've never seen anything like this. So they kept them in a jar. They were analyzing them. He said, we don't even know what this is. But they just fell. I'm saying tonight, whatever you have here, the hernias, whatever you have, horseshoe kidney, lumps on your breast, just begin to expect them. You, wonder, you, you can look or feel around. Nobody's going to just think you're scratching or something like that. <laughs> just go and pull your blouse up. Don't do nothing like that. <laughs> One lady came running down in a meeting with her blouse just, just lifted up. And she said, look, look, they're gone. I didn't know what was gone. I knew. I, I, I was hoping it was not the wrong thing and the right thing. And. She was screaming like crazy, and the right thing left, and the things that were supposed to stay stayed. But so anything could happen. Tell your neighbor right now, go for it. Tell him to go for it. Tell him. But some of you are going to find things missing. You're going to maybe find a rash or a or a scar. What's happened here, ma'am? Two years ago, when you were here, you called out blood in the kidneys. Blood in the kidneys. I had a nephrostomy tube in my kidneys. The Holy Spirit touched me, and it was totally 
healed. My wow. doctor attends here as well. Wow. So I was totally healed. I had been bleeding for seven weeks. Bleeding for seven weeks. In my kidney. Yes. In the kidney. Yes. Yes. And you heard that word and you grabbed it. I did. I wanted it. You wanted it. It was you mine. You desired it. It was mine. It Desire, was mine. Desire is a form mine. of pursuit. Yeah. <laughs> and what? What? She's having a spell down here. Don't worry. <laughs> this is the second one. <laughs> and God let us go where he called us. I was... Totally touched by the Holy, by the Holy Spirit. Spirit that night. That Holy Spirit is something. And we had such a party. Thank you so much. There's nobody like him. There's nobody know. like the Holy Spirit. Nobody can substitute yes. him. Yes. He's come on, say nobody. Nobody. Nowhere. Nowhere. No how. No how. There's no imitation. There's no imitation. And there's no substitute. And there's no substitute. He's the mighty third person he is the mighty third of the Godhead. Come on, give the Holy Ghost a hand clap, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. We get healed because of Jesus, what he did, but it's the Holy Spirit that brings it to you. We get forgiveness because of the blood, but it's the Holy Spirit that washes you. He's intricately involved in every fine detail. It's because of the cross you get delivered, but it's the Holy Spirit that's in there kicking those devils out. We'll say, yeah, but I'm pretty bound. Well, Legion had 6,000. It didn't stop him from dragging 6,000 demons to church. Come on. There's no excuse. There's no excuse. You can be free. Where you go to church here? I do. I'm so blessed. You are. I get to attend here. I love it. We have the best of everything. The best of everything. The best of everything. Holy Spirit just smiles on this church. Look at our amazing. I see them. They are amazing. They're so awesome. I see that. We're so thankful. Thank you so very much, Holy Spirit, for our gifts and our pastors and our worship. Yes. And our family. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) Well, don't look at me. You're thanking them. Thank you. All my life, you've been faithful. All my life. And all my life, you have been so, so so good. Every breath. With every breath that I am made. Come on, I will sing. Oh, I will sing. Of the goodness. Of the goodness of God. Again, all my life, everybody. All my life. And all my life you have been faithful. All my life, come on. And all my life you have been so, so so good. In every breath. With every breath that I am able. I will sing it, come on. Oh, I will sing. Of the goodness. Of the goodness of God. What's happening here? Tell me what happened. Last month, yes. I was over at Pleasant, and I and you prayed for me. Over where was this at? In Orange County. Oh, Orange County. <laughs> About a month ago. Yeah, yeah, you were at the service. Yes, okay. but I came late, uh-huh. so I didn't get a chance to talk to you. You just um, put your hands on me, and I fall down. You fall down. Yeah, I was born very weak. And I did not know what healthy means because I have never felt healthy, healthy sensation. I have been always weak. And also, um, I have SIBO, which is small intestinal over, bacterial overgrowth. So I've been throwing up almost every day. And that SIBO symptom is gone. <laughs> Praise <laughs> God. <laughs> And also, I have been suffering with frozen shoulder on my right side. So Fro- I've been a frozen shoulder. Frozen shoulder. And I have um, I've gone to the physical therapy for two and a half years. And I have like upcoming, um, upcoming appointments up until October. 
and I canceled out everything because it's been healed. <laughs> So where do you live? I live in LA. You live in LA. Yes. So you drove all the way up here. Yes. Yes. The the major reason is that um I still I am still taking medicine to go to sleep. I still have insomnia and I have overactive bladder. Okay. I've never gone to missionary trip because of bladder issue. Yeah. And I really want to go to missionary trip without having <laughs> bladder issue. <laughs> And also, the major reason that I went there last month was because my mother is suffering from so many illness. Uh -huh. She has kidney failure yeah. and cancer, yeah. and she has she was born with high blood pressure okay. and diabetes. So Trust I wanted me, medicine. To... Medicine can be your friend. Yes, it can be your enemy. She's like that. Everything for a season. We don't curse wheelchairs, we don't curse canes and walkers, we don't curse medicine. But we just say don't, everything in the Bible has an expiration. Even Job. Come on, say every problem in the Bible, problem in the Bible. had an expiration date. <laughs> All we say is don't just expect it to be lifelong. No matter how bad it is, someone says, well, that would take a miracle. That's what he does. No, but that would be a really big one. He has a few of those left. We gotta, when you say miracle, you're understanding you are saying against all odds, against all logic. A healing isn't gradual and a miracle instant. That's not what a miracle is. A miracle is something that isn't supposed to happen, whether it's over a, the first day or whether you get healed of Alzheimer's over five years. It's still a miracle. So the time element doesn't have anything to do whether it's a miracle or not. What makes it a miracle, it's not supposed to happen. It's against everything medical, medis, medical science says. It's against your age. It's against anything that you could even possibly think. We've had, we've had women that were, that were breeders for the occult. We, we just watched devils come out of these breeders, these girls that were laid out by these priests. So they could sacrifice these babies. These were people that were far gone. But they came and they got delivered. Yeah, they screamed a little bit. Yeah, wait. I mean, they, yeah, they screamed and they, they were vulnerable for a moment. You got to own it for a moment sometimes. Say, own it for a moment. Sometimes you have to own it for a moment. Yeah, I am crazy. Yeah, I'm not thinking right. Yeah, I, I have passengers. But you don't have to stay that way. You don't have to stay that way. So nobody condemns you for insulin. No, no, we don't do that. We just, we just get you so strong and fired up that little by little or all at once, you get set free. I understand what I'm talking about here tonight. So it's very, very important. Don't disqualify yourself. Because right now you may need that and that's, that's your lifeline. We, want to, we just want to strengthen your faith during that whole time. And there'll be a time whenever intervention will take place. The man had to dunk how many times? Not three times, not four times. How many? Well, I'm glad most of you know that. He had to dunk seven times. A little bit of Bible quiz here tonight. He had to dunk seven times. So don't be ashamed. Don't, build, don't feel backward for that. We have people come in on respirators. They come in with oxygen masks. They come in with oxygen tanks. There's a couple of those here tonight, I believe. And they left without the tank. And they left without the walker. A man named Franklin is on the internet now. He was in Miami Hospital. He was paralyzed from the waist down, bedridden for over a year. And he, and he told his people, get me to that meeting down there on Sunday morning. I got to get to that Sunday morning service. We were at the Words of Life Church. And they brought him in paralyzed completely from the waist down. And they wheeled him up, and I said, hey, I didn't ever met him. But he had been watching some of the stuff on YouTube or on, online, and he said, I got discharged from the hospital to come down here so I could walk. I said, what's your problem? He said, I can't walk. I said, how bad are you? He said, I'm paralyzed from the waist down. He said, I've been in bed over a year. And I thought, well, do I touch him? I heard Holy Ghost say, don't touch him. People's gonna watch this video. You know, if you touch him, they're gonna think you did something weird, because people do think weird. Come on, say Amen. 
I said, I said, you want to walk? Just come to me. He said, but I can't walk. I said, well, not before today. So you can't count everything before you come here. What happened before here don't matter. The moment you pulled into this parking lot. Come on, the moment you walked into this building. The moment you raised those hands. Come on, see, this is a new day. That was then, but this is now. Come on, say, that was then, but this is now. And so I was really told by God not to touch him. I said, come on, come to me. He said, but I, I said, get over here. He jumped right up and walked right to me. That's exactly why they couldn't understand Jesus, because it looks so natural. It's like, well, wait a minute. Maybe he could walk all along. Maybe that blind man, he didn't do anything profound. He didn't even have any music behind him. I don't know how he didn't do anything without singing Jesus, Jesus, something about that name. I don't know. I don't know how he did it. He created atmosphere with his words. He carried it. Come on, say, I can carry the glory. Say it. He just carried it. He never got empty of it. He stayed cultivated before the Father. He was never out of gas. He was never out of, out of grace. He was always on point. And I mean, this when he walked across, I said, man, I, and I laughed. I said, how'd you do that? He said, I don't know. I'm not supposed to be able to do this. I said, well, don't look down. You'll fall probably. Don't look down. I said, just walk across the church a few times. Well, the place was getting pretty ecstatic. And it's a shame that it took that to get some believers believing. Whatever, but whatever you need. I mean, in this hour, God is saying, I want my people to see my glory. And a lot of, we're gonna see so many people, probably from some of the people in this church, get equipped and touch people at Walmart and Starbucks. and You know, I mean... At the park, at the pool. All, all you got to do is just say, can I pray for you? You mind if I say a prayer for you? Everybody that can't walk in a win- can I say a prayer for you? You're not doing it, he's doing it. But your prayer's igniting it. People need to be ignited. They need to be challenged. Quit feeling sorry for everybody. Pity is the biggest ministry in the church. It's helping nobody. Do you hear me? Come on, say, I hear you. You know, we go home from church and we say, well, I feel so bad for Alice. I just, I want to go over there and just hug her and take her out to dinner. Well, she don't need any food. She needs a word, a touch, a friend, a prayer cloth, somebody. She needs something as a point of contact to the supernatural. Come on, say, we need the supernatural. But whoever you're feeling sorry for, that's a sign that there's a burden in there. It's your assignment. God's putting that on you. It may not be for the church. It may not be for the pastor. They can't do everything, right? I mean, this church is being raised up for, to build up a mighty army, an international army. So it's very, very important that, that you get get moving with whatever you're sensing and feeling, but this feeling sorry for people. The least you can do is go and just touch them and say, can I say a prayer? Nobody's asking to be super anointed. Nobody's asking to be a wonder woman or superman. Just to be a caring believer who believes you carry presence and let God do the healing. You know? Very important. A while back, Pastor, I, after a great meeting, I walked out. A lady was waiting for me in the parking lot. She says, I can do what you do. That's what she said to me. I said, well, I'm glad you can do it because I can. She said, well, I watched you do it. I said, that wasn't me. That wasn't me. That's him. She said, well, whatever. That's the kind of people that are out here. That soul power, that anybody can do this. It's available. It's costly. But, but what you can do is pray. 
I mean, that's, that's where it starts. That's where the gift should start. It's just by praying for somebody. And let God do it and let it be, you know, let all the evidence be in, in what happens, not in the title that you carry. Or I'm anointed to do this and I'm anointed to do that. Just be you. Just be incognito Clark Kent. Come on, somebody. You know? Leave your phone booth at home. Just care for people. Care, care, care. People need empathetic. They need someone to care for them, identify with them. I, I've been there. I know what you're feeling. I, that's a horrible, I get that. These people that come to our service, it breaks your heart. You know, it's a great thing to see help, but a lot of these people have still a fight to go and they leave. And they don't know how to fight it. They live alone. They live in a big city on a high rise in, in Toronto or New York and they don't know how to do this. They, were, they had all their hope in a public meeting. God can start something here to get you engaged, to get you off of America's Got Talent and say the church has power. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Come on. But you can't fight a full-time devil as a part-time Christian. Say that you can't fight a full-time devil full-time cancer, full-time Alzheimer's, full-time getting old and weak. <laughs> Can't fight that as a part-time believer. You got to get locked and loaded. You got to come in his name. You got to have some scripture in your mouth, some courage in your heart, some persistence in your approach. It's available. Some of you are getting so equipped here in these services. And I'm so excited for you, by the way, coming from Orange County. And, and what's the name of that illness? What's the name of it? Um, SIBO. Uh -huh. SIBO is a small intestinal. Well, he's, he's going to go right down in road or root, <laughs> right through your intestines tonight. Yes. Do you hear me? You won't need anything after this meeting. Yeah. And you're then gonna... overactive bladder. <laughs> your lady, you're just so precious, but I got information for you. He's healing you head to toe. And everything. I can, I can feel the presence oh, of God right now. She said it. <laughs> and, then, and I want to ask God to empower me so that I can go back home and pray for my mother yes. for healing so that she could get healed. And what's her name? Her name is Young. Young. Yes. That's a great name, Young. Forever Young. <laughs> for everyone. Touch your master by the Holy Ghost. Come on, give God a big shout. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. I love my church. Come here, come. Watch, watch, watch. So last year was the first time attending um, Holy Spirit Somebody conference. being healed of a deviated septum. A deviated septum being wonderfully healed tonight. Where are you? Where are you? Deviated septum. Right up in there. It affects your nasal, affects some breathing. Who is this with the deviated septum? Quickly. Come on, don't wait on this, please. Hurry, hurry. Come, ma'am. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Was she taking a slow boat or what? Get up here, my <laughs> word. How long have you had this? Ma'am, how long have you had this? Um, probably 30 years. 30 years! <laughs> 30 years. Why is God doing this? Because God wants you to see it's never too late. Yes. Never too late. Whether it's a, di a death diagnosis or whether it's something you've had for a long time. Can she live like this? Yes, but it's the quality of life. It's another, it's another, another what? Part of her portfolio. What's that? It's a part of her legacy, a part of her able to testify. If you get healed of 10 things, that's 10 things you relate to people. That means I need 10 of that people that come across your path. I got, I was healed of that, I was healed of that, and I delivered of that, and healed of that. God just wants to make you multidimensional. Come on. Come on. You know why? You know why? There's people that are hopeless today. And they're sitting in our churches. They love the preacher. They love the music. They even love giving, but they're getting blessed, but they don't connect the dots that it was to their tithe. People are getting, they're giving their money, but they don't keep track. You've got to connect those dots. So if you get blessed here a month down the road, you know, with a boat or a good deal on a house or 
whatever, you got to connect those dots and say, man, that's because when I gave that, you just can't say, God bless me. Connect your reward. Connect your harvest. Connect your breakthroughs. Come on, say, I'm a tither. I'm a giver. Do you know, if, if people would do that, we'd never have to challenge them to give again. Once, once you connect, when I fish here, I catch fish. Once you connect, when I go to this restaurant, I get good food. See, once you connect with benefit and harvest, man, you just know I gotta keep giving. Because every time I give, about seven days later, about 10 days later, that's how I got the house and the car. And that's how I got the next job. He's a God of harvest. He's never gonna lie to you. I think this is amazing, this thing right here we're talking about. And you've had this for how long? How does it affect you right now? It makes me snore. It makes you <laughs> snore. Are you married? Yes. <laughs> Has he ever commented on your snoring? Yes. <laughs> Is he here tonight? No. He's... You go home tonight and say, tonight, honey, get ready. Baby, there'll be no <laughs> snoring tonight. <laughs> the power of the Holy Ghost. Come on, give God a shout. No, see, I pray for them and I walk away. There's nothing more I can do. See, now the responsibility is on you or her to leave this place and say, I praise you, I thank you. I praise you so much, I'm gonna skip coffee tomorrow morning and praise you during my coffee break. Begin to act like, I mean, because, you know, be healed of this 30 years later or whatever you're gonna get healed of tonight or tomorrow or this weekend, whatever. I love what you said tonight about gratitude opens the hand. I mean, how, how, do, how do you display gratitude? How, how do you never not thank him enough? I praise you. I, I, I'll never forget what you did. You brought me back. You took away my pain. I don't have to take that medicine anymore. I had a lady in Chicago, she was shooting herself five times a day for insulin. She could, the veins got so worn out, she had to shoot behind the knees. 19 years old, I said, you know what, hey, she said, I, I'm just so tired of this. She said, I'm here, I'm just so tired of this. I said, oh, quit being tired, and just touched her. Quit being tired, boom. She went down, and she came back, and she said, oh, my God, my levels were up. And they were up the next day. And recently, she said, I'm completely off of all insulin, no more shots. Come on. But you, 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 you know, a lot of people, Pastor, they don't quit church. They quit pressing in. That was the man of Bethesda. He still hung out at the pool. He lived in the aftermath of people praising, I got in, my arthritis is gone, I can see. He, he stayed in the right place. He was camped by a good pool, by a good church. That he quit pressing in. Wasting grace. Grace empowers you. That's why you leave here. You feel like, my God, I feel like I could conquer the world. I feel like I'm gonna go, you know, I'm gonna go do something. I'm gonna go buy that. I'm gonna go believe for that. That's what the anointing does. That's what grace does. But if you don't move on it, it'll subside. It'll subside. You got to really cut it loose and keep it loose. Did a great job up there with all that. Did you get to let him share though a little bit? Did he get? You did it when? Last year. So you're off for you get a year off. Is that it? You get a... This is so exciting. So what happened this with this? So um, last year was the first time attending um, Holy Spirit conference. Yes. And at the moment, I was in like a really deep, bad depression. Yes. I was taking um, anxiety pills, uh -huh. depression pills, mm -hmm. all the pills you can imagine. <laughs> but after that night, never again. All those pills. To the Come side. on, somebody give God a shout. Somebody give God a shout. All the power. Come on, big guy. Okay, what happened to you, sir? Nothing happened to me. Well, nothing. Um, no, but the Lord used me a lot after he touched me. Nothing happened, but the Lord used you. Tell me about that. Um, where do I start? 
There's so just, many. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you the first me, one. Just give me one or the two. The first one, you told me my mom's diabetes was going to go away. The next day, she calls me crying, saying she felt something she's never felt before. So, a lot, a lot has happened after that's, that. That's pretty good. I that's, mean, that's, that's some, it's bad. amazing. That's not cheesy. I mean, that's <laughs> to get a to get a word and and a and a manifestation within 24 hours. Yeah. How many yeah. will take that? Come on, how many will take that? There's a hernia disappearing on a guy right now. The hernia is leaving your body. Put your hand down there. It's leaving. It's in that upper thigh part. Wherever that side that is, I don't know. It's leaving. Where are you, sir? Where are you? It's leaving, leaving. Oh, sir. I know it may be a little embarrassing, but we want to see you. Help me, sir. Help me. Be a blessing to everybody. It's you, sir. Leaving. It left. Your mother got healed of in the next day. The, the next, next day, of the morning. That was amazing. Did you tell her about it here? I did. Yeah, she started to cry on the phone. Okay, and so then what? There was another one. Um, I mean, he's used me like throughout work. He's using you. Tell me how he's using you. There are some customers that I meet. Um, they tend to open up to me for some reason. For some reason. And then we start talking about God. And then we started sharing testimonies. And then we actually started praying together while I'm at work with yeah. them. So um, I come from a like I come from a family that's that has like a really shy background. Right. We really don't say like I love you, but it's there. Right. My grandpa has never owned a Bible. And right. I told him, let's go buy you a Bible. And my grandpa's a cheap person. He's so a what? he's a cheap person. <laughs> um, <laughs> when once you saw the price. Grandpa, he didn't mean that, Grandpa. <laughs> He didn't mean that. Once he saw the price about the Bible, like seventy dollars, I said, "It's it's a Bible. Let me the buy Holy it for Ghost you." The Holy Ghost is all over. The Holy Ghost is all over. Whoa, whoa. Yeah. Wow. Wow. It's all over you, man. It's all over you. God's opening you up. He's filleting you. Instead of Lydia in Acts 16, and God opened her heart. The Lord opened her heart. And she opened up her heart to her home. She opened up her heart to the Apostle Paul. And a church was established there in that city, the Church of Joy. God's opening you up little by little by little. Don't resist him. Don't resist him at any level. This is the beginning of glory for you. It's the beginning of glory. Wonderful. Come on, give that young man a God bless you. Wow. Come on, man. Come on. That power that hit him almost came back and hit me. I mean, he fell into me. It caught him by surprise. What's going on, man? Uh, 2009, I got stabbed nine times. Uh, they reconstructed my whole stomach. I got a scar from here to here. And ever since then, I can't eat right. I'm always puking. Irritable bowel syndrome, GERD, um, indigestion. I mean, if there's a stomach issue, I have it. Had to diverticulitis, and that's went away uh, through the power of Christ. But there's other things still going on, and I'm just, I'm ready to be healed. I'm ready for Jesus to move. I have a heart for him, and I'm just tired of being miserable. I think this guy just cut in the healing line. 
<laughs> you got to do what you got to do. You got to do what you got to do. He said you got to do what you got to do. He just... It's like that woman reaching there and taking the hem. While the rest of you are thinking about it, he's taking, she's taking it. So he's touched you, but you need all of this done, redone. Yeah. Where's, your, where's your pain at tonight? Right here, brother. Is it hurting now? Yeah, it always, sure? yes, absolutely. We'll check it again. It's starting to fade. Starting to fade. Fade, yes, absolutely. I just feel warmth. You feel warm? Yeah, warmth right here. Oh, the whole, oh, no. oh, no. <laughs> What's the matter? Can we give him all the praise? He touched me. He touched me. Oh, oh he, he touched me. And all the joy. Come on. And, and oh, Something happened. Something happened. Now I know. And now I know. He, he touched me and made me whole. And since I met my blessed Savior, since he cleansed sin. Me. Me Come on, I will never cease to praise him. And I, I will, will never cease to praise him. Come on, I'll shout it. I'll shout it while eternity rolls. Come on, he touched me. He Are you here for this? No. And the joy that floods my soul. Come on, something happened. Something. And something happened. Now I know. And now I know. He What's happening here, young man? What's happening? I ain't gonna lie, I got a my D-rated septum. Yeah. It's almost closed all the way. Uh, it's from gang violence. Fighting. Gang violence? Yes. So uh, I really need healing from that because it affects me on my sleep. Uh, sleep apnea over it. It's uh, And the insurance won't cover for the operation. But So I had it for a few years. It's just in the last fight, just closed it all the way. Uh, but I'm gonna heat up. I'm in need of another healing. I have a nervous muscular. Uh, with scalatory uh, issues. It's probably from using drugs growing up. What kind of drugs? Uh, meth. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it, always a lot of pain all the time, burning, uh, a lot of muscle pains all over my whole body. You hurting now? No, not today. I'm not hurting. You're not hurting at all? No. But it, it comes. It comes all the time. and So it's just something I'm dealing with. And uh, medications trigger it. So I, I just mess my body up using drugs. Put your hands up. And you're, you're forgiven, young man. You're forgiven. You're forgiven. You're forgiven. You're forgiven. You can't get healed as long as you're attaching yourself to some of the reason that you're sick. If I wouldn't have done those drugs, if I wouldn't have eaten so wrong, if I wouldn't have slept around so much, whatever, whatever, you got to let that go. Because you're bringing along the very cause that's interfering with the effect of your miracle. You're, you're passing the basic, the blood of Jesus has washed me. And now he's cleansing. Washing and forgiveness and cleansing are different. It says he's able to forgive and cleanse. Forgiveness is when it's stricken from heaven's books. Cleansing is when it's wiped from your heart. 
Come on, say he's able to forgive and cleanse. Say it again, forgive and cleanse. So when you get forgiveness, but you don't get cleansed, you become a serial offender. You keep committing the same thing. Why? Because you're not cleansed of it. Wow. And then he'll cleanse that. He'll cleanse it. He'll cleanse it with the washing of the water, with fire, with presence, with going to church three days in a row. Come on, somebody. Come on. There's nothing better than steady pressure on the yoke. Some yokes don't break right away. Pharaoh said no. And Pharaoh said no again. And Pharaoh said no the third time and the fourth time. But because of the steady pressure of the presence, it'll break any yoke. Come on, say any yoke. Under the steady pressure. I mean, that's why you, you got to really keep applying that pressure, that name, that blood, that praise and worship on your own. The devil almost don't count this because you're riding the wave of the group. He comes after you personally. Do you have a song in you? Do you have resistance in you? That's what I mean. Don't waste the grace. Get from the group what the group's giving you. Walk out here tonight with an attitude. You know what that is. You've had one your whole life. Come on, say amen. But, but you get this here as part of your training. I mean, this grace is so high in this room right now. I mean, you could invade Turlock and turn it upside down. You can make people afraid of you instead of you being afraid of them. That's what happened when they crossed over the river. They came and said, man, we're afraid of you guys, Joshua. We heard what your God did back there. They were terrified of the power of God. It's very, very important that you're able to make public, make it private. If you don't connect your public and private, then you're wasting grace. And you don't want to waste grace. I don't know if you're about, I'm, I'm having more birthdays than I've ever had in my life. Come on, say, I'm having, I'm getting, it's getting too big for the cake. I have to get a bigger cake for the candles. <laughs> and that's the same way time's gonna run out. You're gonna run out of runway. You're gonna say, but I woulda, coulda, should. I wish I'd have done this. Proverbs 30, verse five, I love it. The Bible says God captures the wind with his fist. Come on, give me one of those. He captures the wind. That's where we get the phrase, seize the moment. God wants to create some momentum in you. One victory, then another victory, then another victory. What if you had three days in a row of victory? What if you had a week of victory? It's available. It's available. This place is on flood stage. This is like drinking out of a fire hose right here. I'm serious. You're in the desert with a fire hose aimed right at you. God has favored this place, and your pastor and Jennifer has favored it. But don't waste it. Don't waste it. I remember, I, I'm from Pittsburgh. Catherine Kuhlman was based in Pittsburgh. I happened to take a benefit of that in my younger days. And, but many people in her day there, her, her tenure there, wouldn't go see her. Preachers were against her. They told their churches, don't go there. She's a witch. And, but when she died, all of a sudden, everybody that lives in Pittsburgh wants to go see her. And so they had to tell them down at the Presby Church, she's gone. They came to find Jesus after he ascended. Where is he? He's gone. Come on, put your hands up and say, I got to do this while it's available. The great catching away is coming. 
I don't want to miss one blessing, one assignment, one miracle breakthrough. I'm here to get everything I can. I will eat your lunch. Come on, give God a big shout in this place. And some of you just have to resign. You're never going to be a, a professional football player. And you're never going to be a Golden Glove. You're never going to win an Emmy or an Oscar. But you might raise a few people from the dead. You, all it takes is one. You might heal the one person to see them walk that couldn't walk or like this lady who was in depression, living every day in depression. I didn't notice that much hand clap with that because we just assume, oh, well, praise God for that. But when you're in depression, you don't hear the music. You don't feel the hand of skin touching you. You don't hear the people saying, I love you. You're in that cave. And you can't hear that. And you're afraid to come out of that cave. That's a huge breakthrough. That's grave clothes coming off. And so it's very, very powerful that you realize you're still breathing. You got some issues, but you're breathing. There's hope. You're in a great place. But don't, don't, don't camp here and not quit pressing in. Don't let a good church make you lazy. That's what good churches do. A man picked me up at Cleveland Airport to take me to the church, and I was in the car 15 minutes. All I heard was how great the church was. He couldn't wait till I meet his pastor and hear their choir and hear their praise team. And they had the best new digital stuff. He was telling me, all, I was just like, wow, wow, wow. So I looked over at him. He's driving. I should not have said this because the woman's killed me. I said, so how are you doing? His glasses fell. He swerved on the truck. He was telling me how great everything was at the church. When I asked him, how's he doing? He said, well, he said, do you mind if I pull over? I think you should pull over. I think you should <laughs> pull over. He said, my wife left me, and, and you know, and, and I'm involved with another lady at the church. And, 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 and on and on, I'm thinking, oh, my God. Bragging on everything that you should be happy for. But listen to me. Every single one of you is a candidate for visitation. That's why you're here. That's why you're here is to get it, not some, not more, but to, to get it all. All's available to you. That's, this is amazing. And this guy right here, I'm just excited for you. I feel him all over you. I feel there's been negligence all through your life. People have just written you off, pushed you to the side. But tonight God says favor is going to fall. And the people who didn't like you are going to like you. Oh, that power of the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody give God a shout. Hey! Now, Kenneth Copeland, we, I was at Brother Copeland's, and he came, he said, Billy, he said, Gloria and I, we know you know the Bible. It's wonderful. He said, when do you look at it, though? Do you ever look at it? I said, Brother Copeland, what do you mean? He said, do you, do you actually look at the verses that you're telling everybody? He said, I know you know them. We're happy. It's amazing. But when do you open the book? And I said, well, I do open the book. And I said, he said, well, I just thought I'd pass that on to you. Well, when he walked away from me, I realized I might not be opening the book enough. He said, he took me to Proverbs 3, which says, incline your ears, set your eyes. Every time you set your eyes on that book, something's going to happen. Every time you put your ears to it, when I read them, I feel them. When I read them, I feel them. When I read Peter walking on the water, I see it. When I read him touching the leper, I see it. That's where vision comes from. That's where, that's where hearing his voice comes from. You can't escape that written word. In the day of conspiracy theories, in the day when everybody's on the anchors giving all their opinion of everything, there's a truth that's already settled in the heavens. Come on, somebody give God a shout. I'm telling you. I mean it. I 
I mean, as much as you know all the Bible stories, every time I open up the Noah story, I'm thinking, there's something else I didn't see in Noah. I, I didn't know there was contaminated seed on the ark. I didn't know that. Where'd the giants come from? I never really thought of that. All I know is that when God handed out the, the prizes for the promised land, only one guy, Caleb, was allowed to choose what he wanted. Every other person was assigned their plot except Caleb because he followed God wholly. God said to him, you pick whatever you, whatever part of the promised land you want. He said, give me the land of the giants. He just would never get enough. Give me the Anak. Give me where all the big boys are with six toes and six fingers. Give me the Nephilims. Give me those guys. I want to eat one for breakfast and one for lunch and, and one for dinner. Come on, say, I'm getting healed tonight. Say, it. come on, I'm getting healed tonight. Bring this guy up. Where's that other guy that was up here that had the pain somewhere? The, with the, uh, yeah, where's he at? Where'd he go? Where are you, sir? He's back where? He's in the restroom. He's in the restroom. Doesn't he know there's a revival going on here? He's in the restroom. Come on over here, ma'am. What happened to you? Deviated septum. Wow. Where's the other guy with the deviated septum? He was just up. He's on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> Two things about people on the floor. Two things. They can't testify, and you can't get an offering from them right there. <laughs> so, always take the offering before you do this, right? <laughs> so, how long have you had this? Um, I think for like four years. I had a surgery um, like a year ago because mm -hmm. I had a blockage, mm -hmm. but I still have a lot of trouble breathing. I take mm -hmm. a lot of nose sprays and uh -huh. medicine for the deviated septum because I still yeah. have trouble breathing. Put your hands up. I don't know who did this to you. I don't understand why all this happened and you had to go through this season of your life. But God is mending fences. There are people right now sorry for the way they treated you. They are sorry. They can't get to you, but they're sorry. They, they, they are disgusted when they think of all that they put you through. But right now, they're still fighting the pride of telling you. It's gonna happen. You get ready for it. Hold your hands up. Like this, like this. God's about to deliver those people into your hands. Come on, somebody give God a shout. Come on, somebody give him a shout. My God. I mean, if you don't do things right, God will get you sooner or later. Do it up front so you don't have to pay for all that remorse later on. When you're standing up here worshiping, when I talked about, it, you know, don't waste the grace. Oh, my God, that's the perfect time to say anything in me, get out of me. Don't just sit here enjoying all the presence and then do nothing with it. That's when you deal with your temper. That's when you deal with that transgender issue. That's whenever you deal with whatever you're fighting that you don't have an answer yet. We condemn nobody, but there's got to be a right and a wrong. I mean, they're actually making a new Bible now where they're taking the book of Romans out of it, the first few chapters. We're in for some great confrontation down the road. And if you want to see continued visitation, you got to stand for truth as you see it to be. You don't have to proclaim it for everybody, but say, as I see it. Come on, say, as I see it. Where I'm at right now, this is right and this is wrong. If I catch up with it later, then I'll deal with it. But right now, I'm, I'm, I'm governing myself out of this book. This book says I'm healed. This book says all things are possible. This book says all my years can be restored. This book says I can leave enough money for two generations. Come on. Come on. Come on.
Yeah, but I don't believe in that book. Well, that, that's you. I mean, I love you anyhow, but I'm just saying this is, you know, this is where this is. That's where it is. I, I was in a meeting, 4,000 people, not well, in, in Oklahoma, northern Oklahoma. 4,000 people. I stood on the stage. Out of all those people, my eyes fell on one guy who was cheating on his wife and from Florida. And I fell on this one guy out of four. It's like a needle in a haystack. And I just thought, I'm thinking, is that, is that him? Is that can't be him. Well, he knew I saw him. So he came to my office later that week, and he said, you saw me. I said, I did. I confessed. I did see you. He said, well, you know, I was with, I know, I know. He said, well, you, you act like you're judging me. I said, why would I, why would I judge you? He said, you're judging me. So I, I took a Bible. Let me see a Bible, somebody. Give me a Bible. I took a Bible and I said, I'm not judging you. But I opened up the Bible and I threw it on my desk. I don't usually throw the word of God, but I, I threw it. I wanted to smack him with it, but I didn't do that. <laughs> so I took the Bible and I threw it on my desk. I said, I don't judge you, but that book judges all of us. It's a scary thing to say, I'm really gonna give my life to this. The highs are high, but God, make no mistake about it, God wants to change you. Don't, don't let all the healing and deliverance fool you. God's after, you're after a healing, he's after you. He's after you. Come on, he is after you. And the greatest thing you can do is let him catch you. Don't run from him another day. It's not worth it. It's not worth it to run from him another day. If Jacob would have surrendered sooner, he wouldn't have had to wrestle all night. I say wrestle early, lose at nine o'clock and go to bed. Come on, somebody. <laughs> <laughs> but he was a cripple the rest of his life because he, he tempted to wrestle God all night till the break of day. Wrestling the, wrestle the devil, you want to fight and win there, but with the Lord, you want to <coughs> surrender. Whatever he's dealing with you on tonight. Give me this girl right here, you, ma'am, right here, you, yeah. No, right behind you, yeah, you. Hurry, quickly, come to me. Presence is all over you tonight. So, presence is all over you. This storm is over. This thing is over. Whatever you're fighting is completely over. Oh. <laughs> completely over. Come on, give God a shout. <laughs> completely over. Come on, if we're gonna pray for him. How we doing? How, how's that going? What? No pain. No pain. No, no pain. Oh. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name. All you got to do is believe and have faith. That's it. What's that? Just got to have faith and believe. That's it. Glorify thy name. Wow. Nothing. Gone. Pray. <laughs> Everything's gone. Holy, holy. Holy, holy. Come on, everybody. Holy. Lord God Almighty, Lord God, as we lift our hearts, as we lift our hearts before you as a token of holy, holy. Come on, holy, holy. Setting you free tonight. Holy, holy. Precious Jesus. Come on. Fresh. Precious Jesus. Oh, we 
praise you tonight. Precious Jesus. We're so glad you've redeemed us. We're so glad that you redeemed us. Precious Jesus. As we lift our hearts. As we lift our hearts. Before. Before. Somebody here with surgical rods. You've had rods put in your body somewhere. I don't know what the reason for this is. Come to me, young man. Come to me. What happened here? So, man, this is crazy. I was just telling my parents that I was wanting this tonight. I you had were telling my, them what? I was telling my parents how I was praying for this. I wanted this very badly tonight. I had, um, I broke my leg a couple years ago. And I have a plate and like, I think it's like 15 screws. And they were just telling me how I have to get it out soon. And I'm not looking forward to that because I have to like go back in and take it all out. And then I'd be. So you want a shortcut? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come on, somebody. Come on. At some point, at some point, every one of us, myself, at some point, we've got to become what Paul was fully persuaded. See, everybody's not fully persuaded. There's some people that are unbelieving, then they go from that to doubt. Unbelieve, you don't believe at all. Doubt, you do and you don't. Believe, you do, as long as it's not bigger than what you can imagine. But once you get past believing, then you got to get into that, that fine area where I become fully persuaded. When that bird was dropping meat twice a day to the prophet, at the same time every day. Now, the first day you could think, well, the bird dropped some meat accidentally. The second day, well, the bird's a little goofy. Come on, somebody. <laughs> you maybe don't know how to chew yet. But for many days, when that meat falls twice a day, you got to begin to say something is going on here. The more of these miracles that you see is to get you shifting in your thinking that this God is God. What did Yul Brenner say in the movie Ten Commandments after the sea opened and Moses is God, is God. It's very important that this is meant not, it, it's to help her it's about to disappear these rods and screws. But but it's meant to shift you. See, you're clapping, you like it, but it's meant to shift you. Ma'am, are you okay? Yeah. Did you need that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, can you say what happened, what you're believing for here? I don't know. All I saw was fire when I was down. Do you what? All I saw once I went down was fire, and then, and then it turned everything turned just white, just, just peace. Just You're coming out of a very dark place. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And there's something trying to pull you back into the dark place. Yep. Okay. They're coming after you. Yep. Pharaoh's army is coming after you. They don't care about what you want. Yep. These are people. You can like people, love people, but you can't let people pull you back. Yep. That's absolutely. Yeah. Come on, say these words. I can't take everybody with me. Come on. I mean, there were 500 people that saw Jesus raised from the dead. Only 120 in the upper room. Where'd the 380 people go that were witnesses to his resurrection? They weren't hungry enough. They didn't want more. They had some. They saw him resurrect. Great, he's... Great, his prophecy is true. What he said happened, great. But, but, but how many? 120 said, man, I got to have more. And that 120 is what went into that upper room, shook heaven, and the, the greatest sound ever heard around the world. 
broke loose that fire, tongues of fire, spewed them out on the main street. The day that the tongues was born. The only language the devil don't know. Talk German, he'll still come after you. Talk Italian, he'll still come after you. Speak in tongues, you'll drive him crazy. Come on. Come on. Come on. You're coming out of this dark place never to go back into it again. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. You're going to have to say, no, I don't want to go back there. Do you hear me? I don't want to, I don't want to go back. I don't want to go back there. Come on, give God a big one, people. Come on. How long have you had this? How'd you do this? I was uh, on a trampoline. On a trampoline? Yeah. And what happened? You landed? I landed like, like that, and then it like just snapped my leg. It was a clean break. It was a clean So where's break. the rods at? It's right here. I have a big scar that goes down here. There. Can you feel the rod? You feel it now? Mm -hmm. You can feel it. How, how far up does it go? It goes from, you just see the scar? Uh-huh. Well, I don't go by what I see, but okay, I see what you're saying. <laughs> so it goes, it goes, how far does it go up? As far as your knee or no? No, it's like from right here to here. While I'm talking to him, there's another person with these rods as well. There's another person. Come on over here with those rods. You got a cane too with the rods. What happened to you? Four months ago, I fell, and then my hip was broken. Uh -huh. And doctor said there was four bone are broken. Uh -huh. They could fix two, but they couldn't fix another two. And then they put a long rod from my knee up to here. and then one That rod hip. won't be there. I hope so, yeah. No, no don't hope so. It's yeah. not going to be there. It should be dissolved. That's why the Holy Ghost won't be there. I said that won't be there! I said that won't be there! This kind of a meeting ought to give you some like real punch. So if you had temptations over glazed donuts, you can say, man, just get out of my way. I don't need no <laughs> glazed donut. You know, if you pretended you didn't look at the bad stuff on the internet, you say, man, I I'm just done with you. I'll throw this computer into the river. <laughs> This isn't hand clapping, night show, Bob Hope, funny stuff. This isn't, a, this isn't a performance. There's a residue here. This is a holy sanctuary. This is meant to put all of your enemies on notice. I will shake you off. Come on, say, I will shake you off. It's great for sermons to move you, but how do you get moved enough to say no? How many oranges does it take to squeeze to fill the glass? For some, a whole orchard. We've got to get into fully persuaded. And it's available to every single person here. Every single person, is it available? I mean, I can't wait till he gets up or she gets up and he gets up. He's down there wanting me to feel his leg or see his leg or something. I don't want to. <laughs> Let's get him up. Come on, I want to see what's going on with his leg. What? It's, it's hard to tell because... What do you mean it's hard to tell? <laughs> you just said a minute ago, look at it. I mean, it feels different. It feels a lot different. What 
a great atmosphere here to get healed. Are you okay, sir? What's going on with you? Get up here. Get up here. Get that man up here. Looks like he needs a little bit of help. I don't know. What's going on, sir? Are you from here? Where do you go to church? Encounter in, encounter in Hillmore. Where's that at? It's in Hillmore. Where? Hillmore. <laughs> Like 10 minutes from here. My brother's church. This is my brother's home church. Awesome. Yeah. So what, do you, what do you need? You're sitting uh, right there. <laughs> I lost my wife two years ago, and I've just been fighting, fighting addiction for years. Fighting what? An addiction. Addiction. What uh, kind of drugs? Just up hills. Mm -hmm. You miss your wife? <laughs> what was her name? Sean. Sean? Sean. Sean. How long has you married? <laughs> 36 years. Mm. We're going to deal with that, okay? You're going to feel released tonight. This is what healing ministry is. It's caring. It's hard when you're in a big crowd because time's running, but most of your ministries are going to be one-on-one. -on -one, and you have time. And you can listen. I mean, I've been falling on him all night. Just, just there, I'd come back and fall on him. I didn't hear anything. So when I don't hear, then I say, come here. Jesus said, how long has your boy been going into the fire? Because Jesus didn't know. When you don't know, you ask questions. Questions give you better discernment. Observation you see with your eye, but discernment you see with your spirit. They're different. A person can look sad and be happy. And we all know they can look happy and really be sad. That Hebrews 5 talks, exercise your senses, practice. I would sit in Catherine Kuma's meeting and just waiting to beat her to the next word of knowledge. And then I would do that with Wilkerson. I would just sit in those meetings. I would say, there's somebody here, migraine headaches. And sure enough, Ms. Coleman would say, there's somebody right. I'd go, yes, yes. That was like winning the lottery for me. And then I would miss it, and I'd go, no, no, I can't. How come he didn't tell me that one, too? <laughs> it was the pursuit, the hunger. For you, it's to be well, to get peace again. Getting peace is militant peace. Getting peace is radical. It means some people you've got to say no to for a while. Get them off your phone. Get them off your library. Get them off your catalog, whatever. Getting peace means quit feeding the mixture. You see, her name was Sean. You married 30? 36 years. Children? No. No children. Come on, put your hands high. Come on, say, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. I release her tonight. I release her now. I release her to you. I release her to you. And I release myself to you. I release myself to you. I'll go to her. I'll go to her. She won't come to me. She won't come to me. I know she's happy. I know she's, I know she's satisfied. I know she's satisfied. And I know she would want me to walk with God. She would want me to walk with and God. Be and be healed. And be healed. And be whole. Be whole. And I choose to do that tonight. I choose to do that tonight. Let her know I love her. Let her know I love her. And that I miss her dearly. I miss her dearly. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Come on, somebody give God a big shout. Come on. We don't talk right to the people. That would be spiritism. But I go through Holy Ghost. I'll say, Holy Spirit, tell my mother today. I'm just thinking about it. Today's her birthday. Today's my mother's birthday. She would have been 90 today. So today I'm just whatever I'm going. Hey, tell, tell mom I miss her. And that, hey, she's better where she is. And, and, and you can count on that message getting there. You don't go to the people. That's not what we're supposed to do. And you, don't, you don't go through anybody else. Peter, Paul, or Mary. Come on, say amen. amen. Come on, give them a mighty shout. Oh! See, because you can have a soul tie to someone in heaven. Then your life is held back. You can't go on. If you're soul tied. You can have a soul tie to somebody on television. You're going to have a soul tied to a country western singer. I thought we hit something over in here. I don't know. Like half the audience here. 
I mean, you really got to be careful. You can get more connected to them than you are to Jesus. Thou shalt not have any other. Yes, be careful with that. You say, I'm not. Well, you ask him that. You can tell yourself, no, you're not doing a lot of things, but get honest. Let the Holy Ghost shine that light in there. Ma'am, what's going on here? I've had a pinched nerve in my right leg. For in your right leg for how long? For two years. Um, There's a breast cancer. Somebody with breast cancer, quickly. Where are you? Breast cancer in the room. Breast, I just heard it clearly. Where is this breast cancer? I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Come to me. Bring her to me. Bring me that lady. She's in a wheelchair. Is that her in the wheelchair with breast cancer? No? No breast cancer? Where's the breast cancer at? I'm waiting here. Come on, don't be ashamed of this. Nobody's gonna go home remembering that you had whatever. They'll remember you for your healing. God wants your healing to define you, not your sickness. <laughs> quickly, quickly. Come on, ma'am, hurry up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Here she comes. You should get a shoot up here, like a slide. They just slide right there. <laughs> when certain preachers come, get the shoot out. They're going to be coming down the... Tell me about this. I believe I was healed. I've been binge watching you. Uh -huh. And my faith increased. And I said, if I went to this local church, they're going to heal me. I'm going to get healed and delivered. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm nervous. I'm going to be healed and get a word. So I went to the church, and they prayed for healing, and I didn't feel anything, but I screamed and lost my voice for a week. And then I binge-watched you again um, <laughs> the next week. Is she saying binge? Is that what binge, she's saying? Binge, like just I watched you. You were in my dreams because I had oh, you on Jesus. TV all night long, all night long. <laughs> You know, you laugh about that, but she did the right thing. You want to go to someone that you feel can really pull you out. There's nothing wrong with that's looking to a man. No, it's not. You look at a man not with just your eyes, but your heart. You know, when you need help, you know, and you can't get into the invisible, you got to find somebody tangible that you can hold on to. That's why pastors are here. I attract to deflect. Come on, say, we attract <laughs> to deflect. Now, if I attract to attract, then I'm in trouble with him. And my time is short-lived. But if I attract so I can say, hey, look at that. So when a tour guide takes you on a tour, you know, and he shows you wherever you're done, he, he's there just to point to why you're, on that, why you're on that truck. You don't keep looking at the tour guide. He's pointing to you where all the alligators are. Now, you don't give up looking at the alligators to look at the tour guide. You look, he's there. He's pointing to the, to the alligators or to where this movie star lived or to that part of the Grand Canyon that you... Da -da 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 -da. That's what we do. Say, we attract, we attract. To, deflect. to deflect. That's what we do. Anyhow, ma'am, you're, so you're still fighting cancer? Well, I turned my phone off because my doctor kept calling me. Oh, Jesus. Because I, I didn't know what to say to him, but I canceled my chemo. Instead, I became a partner that day with you. Oh, Lord, Jesus. <laughs> I told him, you heal me, I'll, I'll partner with Billy. And so where I'm at now is I want two manifestations like Gideon had. Uh -huh. I want the new body part. Okay. This, and then I also... You want a new breast. A new breast. Brand new. I mean, just I want okay. a match set. I got it. Okay, and then... <laughs> Help me, Bruce, help me. <laughs> so you want a healing ministry. <laughs> this is wonderful. He's, he's, this guy's being wonderfully set free. Who, brought, who came with this guy tonight? One of you back in here, bring with this guy. The guy that lost his wife right here. Is he, he, was he with any of you? He's by himself? Okay, you're by yourself. 
I'm excited when you get up. What do you feel there, that disconnection? You feel what? It's coming up right now. Up and out, up and out, up and out, up and out. It's real. I'm tired of being cut and touched and everything, and I want this poured out. I just want it out, this, you know, the port they put in? Because uh-huh. I haven't done any treatment. I want it supernaturally gone. I don't want to be cut again. Okay, what I need you to do for me is just put your hands up, close your eyes, calm down, calm down. <laughs> I can't understand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, go ahead, go ahead. Tomorrow, if you come to the school, I'll answer questions tomorrow, (laughs) not tonight. What's going on here? Breast cancer. Breast cancer. Thank you. Where'd you come from? Where were you sitting? Um, Ranch Cordova, about an hour and a half. Ranch Cordova. Wow, yeah. Mm -hmm. Where were you sitting here, though? Oh, down the hub. Oh, downstairs. 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 That's why it took you time to get here. How long are you fighting this? Tell me about it. Um, About seven years. Got a lump? Got two lumps? Um... I think one. What do you mean you think? Well, because it became like an ulcerated sore. It's what? Like an ulcerate, ulcerated sore. It's still there? Mm-hmm. You sure? When did you check last? Before I came here. Huh. There you go. I have to go to the bathroom to check it, though. I guess you better. <laughs> I guess you better. That's how the Holy Ghost talk. You feel that? Yes. That's amazing, wasn't it? That's going right down into that area, that soft tissue. All that soft tissue is being wonderfully touched right now. Go check quickly, go quickly, go quickly. You can't, what? You can't move. Holy spirits. You can't move. <laughs> she can't move. Great. I get a girl that can't move, of all the girls. Stay there. I don't want to get in trouble with God. Stay there. <laughs> she couldn't wait to move, and you don't want to move. <laughs> Power's all over you. It's to tell you that stuff is being scraped right out of you. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Oh! Look at this. She can't move. Bro, she can't move. She's froze. Oh my, what's going on? Don't touch that dial. Don't change the station. (laughs) There's a storm coming in the area. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Your name is higher. Come on, Bruce. Let's sing it. Your name. Your name is higher. Come on, than any other. Than any other. Come on, your name. Your name is Jesus. Your mighty name. Your name is Jesus. But I call you Lord. But I call you Lord. Come on, here we go. Your name. Your name is higher than any than other. Mighty name. Your name is Lord. Your, Your name is higher than, than any other. 
Your mighty name. Your name is Jesus. But I call you Lord. But I call you Lord. How do we feel? You feel all right? Can you do it now or no? <laughs> You're still froze? <laughs> She's froze. She can't move her legs. Wow. It's pretty special, man. It's pretty special. It's pretty special. I came to pick it up. You came to what? I came to pick it up today. You came to? Pick it up. Pick up, Today. pick up the healing. We we have takeout. We give. Just... <laughs> it seems like you can't take anything out, though. It seems like you're stuck right here. It's wonderful. It must mean while you're stuck here, he's removing all that soft tissue, all the infection. What do you sense in that chest area? What do you? Reverberating. Reverberating. Yes. Vibrating. Vibrating. Beautiful. We're running against time right here, so. You know, come to the meeting tomorrow. And, you know, I mean, when that mantle, when Elijah came, when the chariot picked him up, and as that chariot's taking him up, the mantle fell to the ground. Who was that mantle for? People say, Elisha. I say, no. I say, for every generation after. Come on, every generation. For this generation. Ma'am, I'm excited. You've been staying. Thank you for your patience. I appreciate it. Are you a member here? Um, I just started coming here um, about five months ago. Wonderful. Um, I had a pinch. I have a pinched nerve that okay. I've had for two years. Mm -hmm. I had surgery on my back. I have a, a rod and five, four You screws. have a rod. Why didn't you say did. you had a rod? I have a rod. That's why I ran. Well, I, you, I didn't. I did the rod people oh, already. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh. My rod's not as big as theirs. You know, if you miss the rod prayers, then you got to wait till the rod's called out again. She missed all the rod prayers. Very patient lady. What do you do for a living? I'm an ortho tech. An ortho tech. Tell me what that is. What do you do? Casting, splinting, suture removal. Suture removal. Wow. Wound care. Wound care. Yes, I've been off work since um, April. I'm not supposed to go back until October, but I'm ready to go back because you're going to heal me tonight. Mm. Yes. Yes, wow. Lord. Yes. Come on, everyone say there's a presence in this whole room on every single person. I would walk real careful when you leave the meeting tonight what you do, who you're with. And sometimes you can go right home and eat a bologna sandwich and mess it up. Nurture it. Nurture it. I thank you. I praise you. Nurture this. I need more. I don't want you to ever go. Restrain him. And that's if you want more. If you don't care about more, then that doesn't mean in a nasty, negative way. Maybe now's not your moment for that. But there's a few radical, hungry people in this room. How many radical, hungry people do we have? Oh, the power's all over you. That mighty touch. Of, oh, oh, Lord Jesus. Wow. It's all over. Whoa, 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 whoa. I stay up here. You go. I stay. That's what the rule book says. What, what, what? How are you? you any better? Uh been trying to move. You're trying to move. That's it. <laughs> trying to move. What did you do? I didn't see it. I missed it. I, trying to get unstuck. You can't get unstuck. 
<laughs> I can just imagine what some of you are thinking here right now. She said she can't get unstuck. Amazing. What church do you go to? Um, Oasis Christian. What's it, called? What's it called? Oasis Christian. Oasis Christian. Is it in town here? Ranch Cordova. Where Ranch I of Cordova? Yeah. Does your pastor know you're here? No. <laughs> Look right in that camera and tell your pastor hi right there. Hi. I'm sure he's happy. If you're going to get help, he's happy. This is the anointing is on you for this. It's amazing. We've seen this. I've seen it. This isn't common. There's something, un an unusual assignment lies ahead of you. An unusual assignment. When God lets a person freeze them and make them steal, there's an unusual assignment that's coming. Are you willing to surrender to that? Yes. Hold your hands high. Come on, get them up. Hurry up. You, you can't, dear Lord. She's got it bad, I'll tell you that right now. She is, you can hardly do that. Something, it's, it's like a, like a kabod. A what? Um, ka presence, yeah. heavy, it's presence. Wow. Let's all stand to our feet all over the place. Thank you for your patience tonight. Thank you so much. We give God praise here. Give him such praise. What's your name, sweetheart? Marco. Marco, what do you want me to do here? We, I don't know. I got you, we got you froze. You can't move. You uh, mar are you married? No. Okay. Are anybody waiting for you at home tonight? No. Okay. So you could stay here all night like this. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> you would, wouldn't you? I, I would. What are you feeling? You came here for breast cancer. Mm. Yeah. To be healed. To be healed, yes. Yeah. You're froze till that cancer is gone. Oh. Okay. I receive it. Wow. Somebody better give God a shout.
You know, you're going to have many of these in this church. It's Mark chapter 2. And I know you know the story, but the Pharisees, when they lowered the man through the roof, we never seen it like this before. Get ready for the harvest to be invaded. We've never seen it like this before. Coming your way. Coming your way. I'm excited. I'm glad you're the one froze, but I'm excited. <laughs> what, are you, what are you feeling there? What are you, what are you sensing? Just vibrating. Vibration. You can't move one leg in front of the other. Try. <laughs> you can't pick your leg up. You can't pick your feet up. <laughs> Not right now, no. Not right now. Wow. It's pretty amazing. Who wants to be on night shift tonight? <laughs> Everybody loves you here. And thank you for being vulnerable to do this. I know you're not doing it, you're yielding to it. Does it concern you a little bit or? No, I've been asking him, what is it that I'm not doing to, to be healed? Submit and be healed. To submit. Did you, did you say submit? Yes. That's what I thought you said. So you never thought this was gonna happen? No. You didn't plan this? No. <laughs> you didn't come up from downstairs just to do this? No, I didn't even want to be on camera. What? <laughs> I was just hoping to, you know. Get kinda, healed behind closed yeah. doors. How do you close a service with a frozen lady in the front? <laughs> Give me your first and last name. Marco Kuchenko. Marco Kuchenko. I'm so excited about this healing. I mean, we're focused on the freezing, but he's, he's healing you. Did you have any lumps there? Did you have any growth? There's a growth, yes. What? A growth. A growth there? Yeah. Oh, Lord. It's probably being vibrated right off. How Jesus loves and how, how Jesus How Jesus loves. How Jesus loves. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, precious Jesus. How, How Jesus loves. Come on, let's all sing it one time. How Jesus loves. Come on. How. Is Ron Bailey in the house tonight? Ron Bailey? Where are you at, Ron Bailey? Can you help him up here? I was told you were going to be here. Is he in a wheelchair? Uh huh. 
He's from, I believe he's from uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I'm not sure where he's living. We have a mutual friend. Well, they work in our prayer room in Tampa. And he told me, here we go, over here. Hey there, Mr. Ron Bailey. Eric and Carol told me you were going to be here tonight. So what, what happened here? What happened here? You had a stroke? I had a stroke. Mm -hmm. On November 7th, mm -hmm. I had a stroke. Total uh, carotid artery blocked. Oh, wow. And uh, blood clot went up into my brain. Mm -hmm. And in December of 22, I had my bladder removed. And after 12 weeks of chemo, I had I didn't lose my hair and never got sick. Kept preaching all 12 weeks. You're a pastor, right? Yes, been a pastor 50 years. 50 years pastor. Give him a God bless you. Come on. Thank you. And yes, I was Eric's pastor when he was in Pittsburgh, and I used to go to Catherine's meetings because I worked at Gimbals across the street. Gimbals, yeah. And such fond memories of, hello there, and have you been waiting for me? <laughs> ah, thanks so much. And remember that as long as God is on his throne, everything will turn out all right. Listen to this guy right and here. now... Here is Jimmy McDonald. Is that Catherine or not? Yeah, well, you're close. I don't yeah, know if it's... I'm you're close. close. <laughs> She'd be proud of you, though. Uh, so what do we want to do here? You're, what can't you do? I can't stretch this hand out like this. Mm -hmm. And I'm believing that when Jesus said to the man, stretch out your hand... I'm going to stretch out my hand and it's going to work. Come on, come on, come on. That's why you as a church, the power that God has given this church is to create an atmosphere for people like Pastor Bailey to come here. Don't go to church here but to come here because they hear there's a place of hope. Amen. They saw it on, they saw it on the internet. They saw it on the stream. Some of these made, my, made, major things that happened tonight. That's why you're needed. Your prayers are needed. Your faith. Amen. Living right. Live tight. Live right. Wow. Thank you. I prayed you called me out. You prayed that I called you out. I did. I prayed that you would... And because I believe that tonight's my night for healing. Oh, my. <laughs> Come on, give her a God bless you. Come on. Wow. Wow. The Spirit told me to pray for him. Oh, well, this, we can do that after. We can okay. do that after. We can do that after. I'd like you, if you could, to go to the restroom and check. Can you do that? Sure. Would you do that for me tonight mm -hmm. before we go? Okay. Can you make it? Can somebody go with her? Yeah. Wow, I can't wait to hear about that. Amazing. Amazing. Stretch forth your hand. Stretch forth your hand. Stretch forth your hand. Stretch it forth. Come on, just, just open it up. Just open it up. Just open it up. Lord, I love you. Yes. Open it up, Pastor Bailey. 
Don't, don't, don't leave me now. Don't leave me. Just open up your fingers, Pastor Bailey. Lord, I and I and I worship you. You are done good. Open it up. Come on. Take it out. You're doing good. You coming tomorrow too? You coming tomorrow too? You are worthy to be praised. There it goes. There it goes. Open those fingers. Worthy. Worthy to Come on, sing it again, guys. Lord, I love you. Come on. Lord, I love you. And I worship you. You Just are put it up fast. Do fast, fast. To be praised. Put those fingers up. Lord, I love you. Good job. And I worship you. That's good. You're doing it. You. And you are worthy. Be praised, Lord, I love you, and I worship you. You are worthy to be praised. Come on, you are worthy. I believe faith went into you, spirit went into you, and I believe this is a matter of time. I believe. You know, I know you do. I know you do. Thank you. Thank you for all 50 years of service. And you're not done. Whatever that is, I want to do it. There's still a lot to do. Yeah. I mean, you know, with the internet today, and it's, it's a fingers away, it's just so much. He spared my life. Hmm. He didn't have to. This won't be the first time that I've experienced healing. Mm -hmm. Eric wrote me that he remembers one morning I was leading worship, and I had a collar on. Yeah. And right in the middle of leading worship, I pulled the collar off and didn't miss a beat. There Eric. you go. Eric said, I remember that morning. That's good. And he's watching tonight. He, he is. and Carol, and they're believing, and thank you. And Lynn and I are believing. My wife is here with me. She brought The lights me. go out. The, the music stops, but the anointing stays in you, works in you. you. Come on, give God praise. Come on. Come on. What? Well, I still see it. Uh-huh. Um, but I'm believing it's going to go. So you still see a lump or what? I still see it, yes. Same size? Same size. Same size. Mm -hmm. Well, something happened there. We have to believe that know. that's in there t drying up those roots. Yes. Right? Yes, so absolutely. So sometimes but between the time it hit the tree and got to the roots, took a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. You coming back tomorrow? Yes. Good. We'll see you in the morning or in the okay. afternoon or in the morning. What time is the morning session? Two, not till 2? There's no morning session? 2 o'clock. 2 Come two o'clock. All of you, come two o'clock. How many's coming at two o'clock? I don't know how to close. So, um, wow. Am I going to ruin it by talking? So, see you tomorrow. <laughs>